How's it going everyone? I'm doing an updated video for how to log on to multiplayer in Craftopia. If you have not seen my previous video, I am going to be including it in here because most of that is still relevant. There is one part that we noticed later on that some people may be still having problems. So if you did see the last video, it didn't work. This may help you also. I'm going to be adding that new part to the end here it's another step that you need to check in order to make it work as some people use a secondary router on top of the modem that you get from your isp if you like these videos give me a thumbs up let me know i will continue to make videos like this for you for those of you that don't know how to do this i'm going to be walking you through how to do this the best that i can everybody's system is different routers are different you might have to do a little research on your specific router to find this out, but I can give you the general basics of how to do this. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go down to your search and type for CMD. Hit enter. This is going to open up your command prompt. In your command prompt, you're going to type IPCONFIG. And in here, what we're going to be looking for is your default gateway. This is the IP address of your router. And then your IP address for your computer. You're going to need these two things in your router settings in order to make this work. You need it to get into your router and then you need your IP address to make it work. This is for, when you looking, this is for PC. If you're on a Mac, you can find this information also in there. If I remember correctly, it's under the Apple, and I want to say it's system preferences. I can't remember off the top of my head, but a quick Google search or something, and you can find out where you can find your IP and gateway on your computer. So once you get your IP and your gateway, you're going to go to a web browser. You're going to type in the IP address of your gateway. Once you're in here, you're going to have a username and a password. Username and passwords are different for different routers. I personally have a Netgear, which is a fairly common router. And I will show you how to what it looks like in here. The main things you're going to be looking for, most of them have them somewhere. It may not be in the same place that I'm showing you, but it's going to look similar to what I have. For your username and password, if you're not sure, sometimes on your router, you'll have a sticker on there that will have your username and password written on there, or maybe the booklet that came with it. You can Google your username and password defaults for your specific router. It should have that where you can find what the default is. Most default usernames are admin and the most common passwords are either they're left blank. The password is password, just P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D or it is admin also. My password Obviously different, I've changed it. So once you're in here, you're going to want to go to, most of them will have an advanced tab. You're gonna to go to the advanced tab and the advanced setup. What you're looking for is port forwarding slash port triggering, one of those. Once you're in here on a Netgear, you're gonna add a custom service. Most of them are similar to this. Once you add a customer custom service, you can name it whatever you want to. This is just for your reference. You also want to go down to the service type and you're going to want to pick TCP slash UDP. Some people say it's just UDP. We found that it's, you need to use both. You're going to want to open up port 8787 for your starting port and your ending port 8787. You want to leave the port range internal the same. If you don't have this 
option and you need to do an internal one, the numbers will be the same. Some people have said I've seen in some of the different forums and stuff that you also need to go 8787 to ending 8790. Some people are saying they need to do that. Personally, for both of us, we were able to just do 8787 and it worked fine for us. Once you've done those, then you need to put your internal IP address. This is the IP address of your computer. You need to have it pointing to the computer you're specifically playing on for it to work. Best advice is if you can on your computer, set your computer to a static IP within your network so that it doesn't change. Otherwise, you're going to have to go in here and redo this if for some reason your IP address changes on your computer. Once you're done, you hit apply. Now I already have one set up. So this is going to have a port conflict. So it's not going to actually work. You see here, I have this opened up to 8787 to my IP address. Once you're done with this, both parties need to do this. So everybody who is going to be playing multiplayer with you needs to open up their ports. It's not just one person. If this still doesn't work for you and you have a secondary router from your ISP, if they gave you a router instead of a modem, which most do nowadays, you're going to need to also open up that one. First thing you need to do in your secondary modem, like the Netgear here, you're going to need to find out what your IP address that it is using is from the other router, from the ISP's router. On this one, it's under internet. It could be labeled WAN, W-A-N. It could be using that. You're going to be looking for the IP address. So this one here is using this IP address. So this is the IP address I'm going to want to put into the ISP's router. Once you're in here, if you have the bridge mode turned on, if you know what this is, you should not have to worry about this. That turns it into a basic modem, essentially, and turns off the networking capability. I do not have it turned on that way. We ran into this issue ourselves. This will really only be an issue if you're trying to host the game, not if you're trying to join. From here, you're going to want to go into advanced again. You can do the same thing with port forwarding. Unfortunately, with my internet, Xfinity, you have to log on to their website in order to forward ports. I don't understand why they make you do that, but kind of a pain. You can get through it and do essentially the same thing you did with the previous router with opening the port using that other IP address we just got that the Netgear was using. If you cannot get that to work, the last and final thing you can do is you can set your router to DMZ mode and enable that. Full disclaimer though, DMZ is something you would want to try to avoid if you're not familiar with it. It will open up every single port on your modem. If you do this and do not have another router behind you, you're opening yourself up for any kind of viruses or attacks because they're going to have open access to your computer. You do not want to do this unless you have some other kind of protection behind it. If you have a secondary router, this is an easy way to do it. You can open up those ports as long as nothing else is plugged into it except for that router. Your secondary router is already blocking all the ports that's going through anywhere else anyways. If you're still having issues or you're uncomfortable doing this, you can always call your ISP. They should be able to help walk you through this or sometimes they can remote into your modem and open it for you. Depends on the person you're talking to whether they will do it or not. Once you're done with this, you're going to want to go into Craftopia. You're gonna to wanna to hit multiplayer. 
select your character you want to play. If you are joining a game, you can just wait here. You'll get an invite through Steam from the person hosting it. If you are hosting the game, you want to go to Host and Play. Select your world. Start it up. Once you're in your world, you're going to want to go to your Steam menu. Do it by hitting Shift Tab. I'm sure most of you know. Right click on the person you want to play with and click invite to play. They'll get a link, join just like every other Steam game, and they should load into your server. If they do not immediately start loading, then something is wrong with one of your sides. You're going to have to go back through and check your settings. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, please leave me a like if you found this helpful so that I know I continue to make videos like this. If you enjoy this content, you can see our playthrough videos. Hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.